I purchased two faulty Nintendo Switches for £55 each, or if you're American, $73 each. Both of these bad boys have no power, so I'm hoping I can fix both of them. I have no idea what's actually caused the no power issue. We're gonna go over to the bench now and take a look. Come on, two Nintendo Switches, man. We got this, let's go. So we'll just have like a uh, quick visual inspection of these Nintendo Switches. Condition wise, they seem to be A-OK -okay, in all honesty. The back doesn't have too many scratches. This is probably the, the worst one out of the two. But again, it's not awful. They're both missing a kickstand, which is a little bit annoying. Just check the serial number on this. This is, is it XAJ400? XAJ400, to be honest. All the ones that I that I buy <laughs> seem to be XAJ400s. I don't know if these are more like prone to having issues. As for the screen, it seems to be okay. Two bottom screws are there. Is the top screw there? It is indeed, so I'm hoping nobody's been in it. What's the state of the rail? The state of the rail looks fine. Small, tiny, tiny small scratches. And the other side, Vondavar, look at that, pretty clean. Overall happy with the condition of this Nintendo Switch, bar my grubby little finger marks. Switch number two is probably the one that's in better condition. As you can see, hardly any scratches on the screen at all. Back of the Switch, fantastic condition. Really, really, really nice. Side rail, perfect, like not even one single scratch. And the same for this side. So this one, I really wanna see if I can get working. Hopefully we get both of them, but getting this one done would be my first choice. Serial number on this device is XAJ700, okay. Don't know if that's exploitable or not, not too sure. The way I wanna do this is work on them one at a time. So I'm gonna do all the testing on this one, try and attempt to fix it. And then once we've hopefully fixed it, then uh, I'll move on to the next switch, okay? So let's start, we're gonna call this switch number one, which is the XAJ400. What happens when we try and turn it on. Okay, I'm trying to turn it on from the on button. We get absolutely nada. This is plugged into the mains adapter and this little adapter here is called an ammeter. With a little bit more experience, I should be able to tell what the issue is when I try and boot up this switch from using this little ammeter. It tells me a reading on how much the battery and switch is drawing. And it looks like we get absolutely nothing. It's flat dead. That would actually indicate to me that there's something wrong with the charging port on this one. Seems to be nothing at all. I'll try the other side. So we'll just flip the switch over. We'll try it on the back. What do we get? Nothing. I thought I'd just put it in my, uh, in my Samsung there just to show that we're getting something. So this is what should appear on the screen. But with this switch, we're getting absolutely nada. What about if I push it in a little bit more? Nothing, we're getting nothing at all, okay. There's quite a bit of dust in this console, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's not been taken apart before, which is good. After taking off the back case, I can't see anything that jumps out at me straight away as to why this wouldn't be turning on. Here we have the water indicator, and by the looks of it, it's not pink at all, so it doesn't look like this unit is water damaged, which is good. Oh, I will say, okay, we've lost the plastic that surrounds the top of this charging port, as you can see here, so that's not great. I've now taken the motherboard out of the housing, and what I will say is that this, Charging port, as you can see, seems to be a little bit loose when I'm wiggling it. So I'm just gonna put it under the microscope now and have a look and see if we do in fact have a dodgy charging port. I'm a little bit concerned that the CPU might have gone on this one, but we're gonna have a look regardless. What's strange is that it doesn't really look like there's anything wrong with the pins on this. I don't know if you guys can see as well. It doesn't look like it from first sight, even on that side. I don't know if there's a couple at the back that are maybe a little bit out of pl No, look, they all look fine from what I can see, all of the pins. So that's really interesting. However, the port itself is very loose. So regardless, that will need to get changed. We're now gonna do some generic testing with the multimeter, and we're gonna make sure that all the components that we have are good. So it's the mode when it beeps. So first off, we'll check the fuse. Fuse seems to be good. I'm gonna go backwards this time. I'm gonna check the coil and around BQ and just to make sure. So coil. It's fine once we've scraped off all of the leftover flux. How are these caps looking? We should only have a beep on one side. That's good. That's okay. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. So we have no shorts, no shorts around BQ, which is nice to know. I'm gonna check this little filter here. That seems to be all good. Now we have M92 and a hair. I'm gonna go straight in and check this capacitor here. If this capacitor is gone, it usually means that the CPU is dead and it's usually a no fix. So I'm just gonna get that over and done with. All right, no beep. That's good, that's good, that's really, really good. P13 cap seems to be okay. No shorts around M92, so far so good. No. All seems to be fine so far, very, very strange. We'll just switch over to the back and have a look at the P13 chip, written B12 on here, I don't know what B12 means. Here we have the P13 chip, or Pi 3. 
Again, that seems fine. No issues at all. Beep in one side, not the other, perfect. And we'll check these filters real quick. So again, we're looking for a line of continuity where it beeps straight ahead, but not diagonally. Not diagonally, like Diagon Alley. I've been watching a lot of Harry Potter over Christmas. All those seem to be fine. Everything's pointing to the charging port, just not delivering a suffice charge at all to the Nintendo Switch. Oh, this has just fallen off, <laughs> I think. This is a leg from the charging port, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that's a leg from the charging port. Yeah, it's just snapped off. Look at this. That's where it snapped off from, you can see from this hole. Which isn't that great actually, because it's taken the ground plane with it. So I need to be very, very delicate when taking this off actually. I don't want it to tear any traces around here or underneath potentially. Let's get this port off. We're just gonna add some low melt solder to this part here just to try and loosen these pins up because I don't want any traces being torn here. So I'm just laying down some flux and then we're gonna do the back as well. Four hundred and sixty degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of six out of eight. Let's take this port off. Okay, do you want the good news or the bad news? The good news is that the port fell off seamlessly, like without any issues. Didn't even have to touch it. The bad news, I'll show you on the uh, I'll show you on the port itself first. I think every single pad has come off. Every single one. Oh dear. I can't wait to view this monstrosity from the from the other side of the board. Are you guys ready? Because I'm not. Lord from above. What on earth has gone on here? Well, I think I know exactly why it wasn't charging. Is that every single trace? I'll be 100% honest and say that my heart is just not ready for a repair of that level. I don't think I'm a good enough tech to be able to pull this off. <laughs> Not yet. This will, however, make for an incredible repair one day in the future when I'm competent enough to use 0.0000001 millimeter jumper wire for this job. <laughs> cool. I'd say that these are pretty much clean, which is good. So when I go to put a new port on, it should just go straight in. Maybe there's a little bit here next time that I can deal with, but I'm not gonna be able to fix this today, <laughs> I'll be honest. I am really grateful for having this one though because it's gonna give me like incredibly good practice for trying this. Now moving on to switch number two again, XAJ700, what happens when we plug the charger in? Please don't be another issue like that, please, please, please. Okay, good, what do we have? 0 0.07 amps, 0 0.10 amps. Is it just gonna stay like that? 0 0.10, just staying at around about 0 0.10. If I take this out and turn it over, do we get anything on the back as well? Do we get something different, perhaps? 0 0.07, 0 0.09. 0 0.10, we get the exact same on both sides, which is kind of good. I'm guessing that the charging port on this one is gonna be okay. Let's take it apart and do some diagnosing. Immediately with this one, we can see that the water indicator here is very pink. So I'm assuming perhaps some water damage on this board. You can also see here where the battery is, there's some water damage stuff as well. Other than that, I can't see much more evidence just yet, so I'm gonna take the rest of it apart. Looking at this a little bit closer now, there seems to be quite a lot of water damage surrounding the battery connector, and there is a slightly burnt capacitor around the BQ chip. I was gonna get another battery and test that, but now I'm quite reluctant to do so because of the fact we've got water damage around the connector area here. I can't see much other water damage along like M92, but around BQ, I'll show you in a second, there's some spots that we can see where there, are, there is some quite heavy water water damage. Firstly, we're just gonna inspect the port and just make sure there's no water damage inside there because otherwise that will need to be changed. I think we're good. There might be a couple of pins down there that are, I don't know if that's water damaged together or, oh no, I think they're okay. I think it was just the light. I'll put a toothbrush down there and give it a clean anyway. And then we've got the other side of the port, which again looks fine to be honest. I think the charging port is definitely where the water's come in. You can see that there's some slight corrosion, especially around here as well. Just on here, that is that is definitely water damage. Again, a clean should get rid of what's there, so that shouldn't be too bad. Holy, okay. <laughs> I didn't see this on the face of it. M92 has, quite a lot of bad water damage, especially around, this is the CPU capacitor. I'm praying that this isn't short to ground. So you can see we're gonna need to do a big clean around here and double check and see what's working around M92. If we come down to BQ, which is where I saw the initial damage with my bare eyes, we'll start with this connector. As you can see, a lot of damage around here, water damage, uh, maybe a good clean. You can see that some of it is definitely corroded or should I say most of it is corroded around here on as well, this connector. This is, I believe, the left Joy-Con rail. Really, really bad. And we have this cap as well, which is completely screwed. Now, around BQ itself, we've got some water damage on this. 
I don't know if that's a cap or a resistor, but this cap here is where I spotted the original damage and that looks like it's got, I don't know if that is a burn mark or not now that I'm scraping it away, maybe it's just water damage. Uh, we've got obviously what you can see here, water damage, more water damage. On this cap around here, we've got some water damage. Up here, we've got some water damage. There's no components that sit here, but still not good to have it. So yeah, not that great. Let's go over to this side of the board and just double check. Oh man. Oh guys, this could be a rip as well. So we've got, <laughs> we've got loads of water damage around here. Look at this. In between these caps, loads of corrosion. Loads of it. Not good at all. Not good at all. I'm just going to, oh, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> We've got corrosion here around this chip. Oh, this looks horrendous as well. Okay, yeah, loads of corrosion and water damage around here. This connector has some water damage around it. Where the NAND goes seems to be pretty clean. That's not too bad. I mean, we've got a little bit of rust here, which would indicate a small bit of water damage, but nothing too bad. Around this area of the board seems to be fine. The connectors seem to be fine. Fan header seems fine. Power on, volume button, connector seems fine. I'm actually really scared. We're going to look at the back of the board. This is what I'm probably scared about the most. Is there going to be corrosion on the back of the board? Ah, of course there is. P13 is fried. P13 has loads of water damage around it. Lots and lots of water damage. This is obviously the area of the board that is, that is going to be knackered as well. Having a look at these caps to see if they're still alive. Water damage around here, around here. Wow, look at this. Much more water damage around here. Let's go up to, oh wow. Yeah, look man. This is all just screwed. All water damage around here, look. Water damage around here as well, that area. I don't know what that area is. No idea what this area is either. But again, bits of corrosion, look at this. Look, all this corrosion, way too many parts. Way too many parts of corrosion on this board. We got this, this up here as well. This is completely screwed. This is the CPU area, so this is the back of the board. And you can see that we have water damage here. It's not horrendous at this location. I mean a little bit here as well. Yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't looking great. It's funny because this switch looks so good on the outside. <laughs> the question is how much time and money am I willing to spend trying to fix this? I don't think it's going to be fixable. Let's be 100% honest. However, I'm keen to see if I could make the slightest difference. This is the true definition of you win some, you lose some. I've not had a water damage switch this bad for a while. This, my friends, is the gamble that you're going to have when you try and buy on eBay, you're gonna have things like this, you know. One of them definitely repairable by a more competent technician. This one though, pfft, depends how much time and stuff you wanna spend on it. I mean, theoretically, if you kind of replaced every single component, maybe you get it working. I'm just gonna test this capacitor here, the CPU one, and just check and see if CPU is dead or not. If not, I'll put a little bit of time into this board to see if we can fix it. Continuity mode, here we go. All right, this capacitor seems to be fine. Let's check just around quickly M92, I wanna see if we've got any shorts. Surprisingly, M92 seems to be fine. Let's check little Fusey down here. Fusey seems to be fine. Filter seems to be fine. Let's check BQ, because I think this is where we're gonna have the majority of the issues. Check coil first. Coil seems to be fine. Okay, most of the caps around here seem to be fine as well. I think this little guy might be alive somehow. It's all right, little buddy. I got you. So BQ, no shorts to ground around the area. Again, I know we've got a lot of water damage. Let's flip over to P13, see what we've got on here. Just gonna check the filters quick. I'm gonna start by giving the charging port a clean. I'm gonna give M92 a clean, and I'm gonna give BQ a clean, and I'm gonna give P13 USB a clean. These are areas of the board that I am aware of and that I know A, have water damage, and B, I can just replace the chips. I'm not gonna to touch, for example, this area over here where there's water damage. I'm gonna leave that because it's a good indicator of what might be wrong with the switch and why it's only receiving 0.10 amps on charge. So I'm gonna try and keep the isopropyl alcohol to one place as well as the brush just to give things a clean. So now we're looking at M92, that looks a lot better than what it did. We've also got the, the port itself looks a tad bit better again. I don't know if there is water damage in between those two pins there. I'll leave that, I'll come back to that in a second. But yeah, everything's looking a little bit better. We can see around BQ as well. The caps that we need to worry about was this one, which I kind of scraped away anyway. And we also had this little guy down here. He's looking a lot healthier now, but at the moment seems okay. The battery connector I've obviously given a good clean as well. So that's got rid of any liquid damage that was around that. And then if we turn the board over and look at 
P13, you can see that around P13, this also looks okay. Little tiny weeny bits, but nothing too major. And then like I was talking about, you can see I've left the other areas of the board, so you can see all the corrosion around here. I'm just gonna leave that for the time being, because it could indicate specifically a fault with something. If I clean that with IPA, I'm gonna be a little bit screwed. So I've just put this back in the case now, and I've put a screw in. There was a couple of ribbon cables, especially, so the backlight and the, I believe the right Joy-Con rail here. Well, left, I guess, if you turn it around. They were quite severely water damaged, but as you can see now, they're not. They're pretty clean because I've just given them a decent clean. This one as well was a little bit water damaged. You can see there is a tiny bit, but there's no pads missing or anything. They just had a bit of water damage on them. So after giving the main components a clean, I just wanted to place everything back in the board. I've given the charging port a good clean as well. I just want to see if we get anything on the screen. I highly doubt it, and I'm probably going to make the situation worse. Oh, I also cleaned the battery connector here as well, the actual battery itself, because there was a little bit of corrosion from that, obviously from before. So let's see what happens when we plug in the amp meter now. Do we get a different reading perhaps? So there goes the so 0 0.10 straight away. It was starting on 0 0.07. Oh, would you look at that? What? It's got a battery indicator. That didn't show before and it's on 0 0.12 now. Wow, so what, a little bit of a clean has, has helped that? I don't know. What I'll do then is I'll take that out. I've got a known good battery. So I'll put the known good battery in. I'll see if we get a full boot. If that's the case, I'll just have to give everything a really, really good clean with toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol. Literally bath it in isopropyl alcohol. It's times like this I really wish I had an ultrasonic cleaner because it would just destroy all water damage that was on the board. But because I don't have that, I have to do it manually. Maybe I've been lucky and I've just managed to catch this before that was the end of it. So I turn this round now, and if we prompt to boot by putting in the USB C charger, 0 0.34, 0 0.49, that's looking like a normal boot. We had the battery display, it's restarting. There we go, 0 0.35, Nintendo Switch logo. 0 0.78, 0 0.79, console battery 54%, screen is absolutely fine. I can't, obviously, the digitizer is not plugged in, but in terms of how the screen looks, it looks pucker. I don't think, by the looks of it, we're getting 0.64 amps, 0.53 now, it's gone down. That doesn't look like it's fast charging, so I wonder if M92 has a role to play here as to why this isn't fast charging. Nevertheless, that's a very, very good result. The machine's on, that's good. I do want to test some other functionality, so I want to make sure the touchscreen works, I want to make sure the Joy-Con rails work, but before I do all that, I just need to check what fast charging should be. All right, I've reassembled most of this now, and I've tested Joy-Cons, and both of them work flawlessly, which I can't really get over considering how much water damage was on this switch. I'm getting 0.97 amps now at 15 volts, so I think this is fast charging. It's on 1% only because it's literally just his second turn on. Let's give the rest of the board a decent clean. Then I'll leave it on charge for a little bit and see what happens. I've left one bit of the board where I haven't cleaned, which is this area here, because there's quite a lot of water damage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the water damage that's here and then just gently tap this chip and reflow it just to make sure that all the connections underneath are fine. Like I said, the switch is working 100%, but it's more for peace of mind going forward, you know? There we go, you can see the solder melting now, so I'm just gonna quickly come in and touch it ever so slightly, see that little ping? There we go. Now take the air off of it, clean with some IPA, let that fizz, woof! Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> a little bit too hot, a little bit too hot. Wait for it to cool down a sec, and there we go. Okay, wicked. Like I was saying, I don't think these little components need replacing, to be honest. I think we're gonna be all good. The switch is still taking 0.97 amps and we're on 35% battery and it's just going up and up and up, which is amazing. And as you can see, we successfully connected to the internet. I also just wanted to make sure that both controllers were charging because I had that fault the other day and both the controllers seems to be seem to be receiving a charge, so that's good. Games work, no problem at all. This is my Pokemon sword that I put in about 10 minutes ago. I'm gonna leave this overnight and hopefully it's gonna be on in the morning. I'm gonna give it a full test with Pokemon sword, give it a play. And at the end of the day, it was actually quite an easy Go lucky fix. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to fix this Nintendo Switch. However, I guarantee that this is gonna come back when I'm, when I'm a bit more competent as a repair technician. I'm unable to test this in a docking station because I, I don't actually currently have a docking station. I do, but it's broken. I'm waiting on a M92 chip to come for it to see if that fixes it. Once I've tested it on the dock, this one should be good. Sorry, I wasn't able to fix both of the switches, but I'll take one out of two. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.